Target just reported earnings this morning. Interesting one. My big four to pay attention to in this type of kind of recessionary environment, Walmart, Target, Home Depot, Lowe's. So Target came in, revenue, $31.4 billion versus expectation of $30.46. That's a beat. Earnings per share, $1.89 versus an expectation of $1.48. That is a huge beat, especially in the type of area and environment that we're in right now. Same store sales. This is where I was very surprised by expectations, actually. Positive 0.7% versus a negative 1.74%. So obviously, Target is getting their repeat customers. Now, the question becomes with Target, where are people spending? And are they able to adjust to where people are spending? And honestly, it seems like they are. So this is their press release that came out this morning. As you can see, those comparable or same store sales increased 0.7% versus that expectation of shrinking. Same day uh, services, which represent more than 10% of total sales, increased 4.3%. So people are ordering before going to the store, picking things up. Full year highlights, not just focused on the quarter. Revenue grew $3 billion. That's pretty big, but we have seen that consumers are still spending. So I'm not terribly surprised by that. Comparable uh, same store sales increased 2% on top of the 12.7% in 2021. So that was just more growth for them. Now let's get down a little bit further and see where people were actually spending the money. Let's see here. So Ah, okay. Okay. So what they said is they're pleased with where the business is going. And this is not a surprise. They're seeing just like Walmart was strength in food and beverage. They're also seeing in beauty. So I look at this from a, almost a scale. This is your necessities. This is your wants. Food, beverage, obviously a necessity. It's going to pick up there. Discretionary items, computers, TVs, coffee makers, things that you don't necessarily need, you just want. Those are your discretionary items. We're seeing discretionary items shrinking and necessities rising. And now when I see beauty, I think of that more on the food and beverage side, especially women. Uh, I had women on my morning show this morning that are saying that the beauty side and the way they look is as important as the food and beverage. So there you go. Now it is being offset by those discretionary items. And we're seeing that across the board in all of retail. So it's not surprising. The question becomes, how are they going to Keep adjusting to this. Keep capitalizing on this. We saw Walmart's earnings. Grocery carried them. So we're seeing the same thing here. So let's go to everythingmoney.com and see what the reaction is. So it's positive 1.58% as of right now, $169.45 for share. I'm actually curious to see what I want to pay for this company. So let's look at some highlights before we hop over to the eight pillars. Market cap, $78 billion. I also look at it and say, how much more can Target grow? Yes, they're starting to do the online stuff. Where can they grow from here? They've made some partnerships with CVS. I was just at a Target in West Virginia recently, and there was a CVS inside of there, inside of the Target. So that's something else they're doing. Enterprise value. Now, this could be a little bit skewed. So market cap, $78.25 billion. Enterprise value, basically $122 billion. Now, what could that be? What would that difference in debt be? capital leases. They do lease a lot. I mean, brick and mortar stores, a lot of rental space, a lot of being in plazas, being in malls, whatever. So that is probably what that's from. I'm not terribly thrown off by it right away. They do pay a dividend. Now their free cash flow over the last year is negative. We can go in and see what exactly that was. Maybe it was some type of acquisition they did and maybe it's skewed, but the five-year average free cash flow, they can com comfortably afford it. We need to make sure, is this the new norm? Maybe not negative, but is being maybe $1 billion in free cash flow in the new norm, and they're trying to pay out 1.75. It's not going to work that way for a very long time, but we can go and check that out. Gross profit margin, 25.5%. Bottom line margin, 3.2%. I'd like to see a little higher, but I'm not, I'm not so shaken up where I'm not going to go and invest in it. Let's click on the eight pillars and see what we have. So you see my pillars on top. Guys, if you want this software, $7 for seven days, you can customize your own pillars. So you will always have the EM pillars right there. But if you want to customize your own, if you want to make it a little more stringent, see what I did. Five-year ROIC of 9%, that's the EM pillars. I like to look at five-year ROIC over 12%. Still got that check mark. I like 
looking at PEs under 25, not 22 and a half. It hits on that in that level. Revenue growth, I like to see. And you can change, there's, there's quadrillions of different combinations you can do. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that number. So that's something that you can do. $7 for seven days is the offer right now. All right. Click the link in the description below. All right. So uh, the debt thing, I mean, it could go back to the capital leases. We can, we can look further into that. The cash flow growth does concern me, but let's go over the cash flow statement real quick and see what we have going on here. So looking at the cash flow statement, hmm, what am I seeing here? Changes in, okay, so there was a huge change in working capital. So as you can see here, look at, looking at the free cash flow line, Going back five years, 2.7 billion, 3.46, 7.37, massive jump in 2020, coming back to normal, 6 billion, and now a negative 1.8. But look at that, changes in working capital. Negative, I mean, they spent $3.8 billion. They've never, they haven't done that in the past decade. The closest they came was, um, wow, the closest they came was 332 million in 2016. So I would go into the 10K, and find out exactly what that is. It's, it's going to be there. All you have to do is search changes in working capital. They're going to describe what it was. Maybe it was something to grow. May, who knows? You can go in there and find it, and you'll be um, better off for it. All right. Shares outstanding. They are buying back shares. Now, what I don't like about this is that they're just buying back shares regardless. Regardless of where uh, the stock price is, they're buying back. 634 million and 14. And you can see they just kept buying back shares no matter where their stock price was. I don't like companies that arbitrarily just buy back expensive shares. And when I go and look at this chart from them uh, on, the, on the metrics page, when I see an all time high going to $268.98 in 2021, I say, eh, that's maybe a little bit rich, especially since the PE currently, after basically Falling $100 a share is 22.7. That was probably not a good time to be buying back shares. But we'll see. Let's see what the analysts have to say. Now, there's not a lot of analysts predicting out. Actually, you know what? Before I do that, I want to look at the revenue growth. And the reason I want to do this, and this is an important one, COVID was a crazy time, especially for these big box stores. And they saw a massive spike in revenue. So when I look here, and I think that's why we only had four or six analysts predicting out five or six years, look what you had. 2017, 71 billion, 75 billion, 77 billion, very moderate growth. All of a sudden, 88 billion, 103 billion. And now it's kind of slowing to that 105, jumping that $5 billion a year. So is this the new norm? Do we settle and then next year maybe we go to 111 billion and 116 billion, et cetera? Or does it go 108, 96, 85, whatever? Is that the new norm? And then it comes back and stabilizes maybe around 90 billion and then it starts growing again from 90 billion. That's something that I need to factor in. And if I was a betting person, I would say this is not sustainable. Just saying in 2013, they did 73 billion. In 2019, they did 77.69 billion. Not a lot of growth. And it took a global pandemic for them to grow this much. That to me is something that's saying, eh, I don't know about that one. So that's something I'm going to factor in when I look at Stock Analyzer. So looking at earnings per share growth, I mean, earnings per share growth is pretty damn good. It's the, you don't have a lot of analysts predicting out, but you're probably in that low teens. Looking at revenue on the revenue side, you're going from $109 billion to $130 billion over a five-year span, and the growth is very minimal. I mean, it's, it's basically keeping up with inflation. So let's go in a stock analyzer tool and put some numbers in. And I'm actually going to go with, I'm going to go two on the low end. And I, you know what? I'm going to go one on the low end just because I want to point out, yes, 1% revenue growth for Target, low, absolutely low. But coming off of those ridiculous highs of doing $108 billion in revenue, I think they'll probably go back towards that $75, $80 billion range. So let's go with one. Um, let's go with one, three, and five. Five could be high. I think that the sweet spot is probably that three level, maybe four. Profit margin. Um, I think it'll probably sit where it's kind of at. Let's go with three, three and a half, and four. I don't see that changing too much. I'm going to go with three, three and a half, and four for free cash flow margin. PE, 
let's go with 15, um, 16, and 17. I could maybe give them a little bit more because they have a pretty good return on invested capital, about 15%. But let's see what this spits out. So I'm going to click this. $168. You can see that it's on my watch list for $130. This is going to give us six different numbers. This does not mean go and just buy the stock bl blindly. You need to go and figure out what that debt is all about. Go see what that changes in working capital was all about. So let's scroll down here. All right. So I'm looking at $90 on the low end. 131 on the high end, middle ground about 110. It's on my watch list at 130. Why? I want to sell puts probably in that 110 to 115 area. So if you like this video, watch some more, subscribe to the channel. Have a great day.